Wow, what an amazing song there from BBNCC Winans. Love said not so, but God says, of course, yes to your relationship if it's built on the principles of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Good morning, everybody. I'm Simone Malone. You ready? You'll feel good, man. One of your most exciting gospel shows that speaks to your life. Of course, it's the Song Book of Gospel. And for those of you that can see the video as well, we thank you so much for watching us and listening in uh, to a radio station that is changing lives across the country. Well, you know, it's Father's Day week, and we salute all of our dads out there, all of the fathers, and even some mothers that are playing the role of a father. But I, I wanted to have this special guest on. Uh, on my show today because uh, we're going into the summer season and people will be traveling and and people are getting married as well as people getting married they're getting divorced I find faster than getting married and uh, I wanted to have them on my show because not only do they pour into my ministry uh, they are truly uh, living out their passion uh, daily in their ministry of their books and also just in their marriage as I look at their pictures I can just see the glow of Jesus Christ I can see the glow of the Holy Spirit in their relationship so I, I want to welcome uh, to the Psalm Book of Gospel my dear friends from Raleigh Durham which I will be headed in the fall I want to welcome the Whitney's the Rev and of course Shannon Whitney to the Psalm Book of Gospel good morning Duel. how you doing hey now good morning good morning sir good morning Rev, I got the Rev on. They call you the Rev. Why do they call you the Rev, first of all? Because I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> I know that's right. <laughs> you know, when, you, when, when God has brought you from a mighty long way, you have to be able to stand on his word. Absolutely. So everywhere I go, I'm willing to tell people how good God has been when they ask me, what, what what's my what's my the key to success? Right. I say the fact that God is good. So 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 I have to stay true to that. Absolutely. And um, so that's why they call me the Rev. I appreciate that. And of course, uh, your lovely wife, Shannon. But I want to read a little bit about uh, Blessed for Life Ministries uh, because you guys are making a difference um, in, in your ministry. Uh, I'm still reading and just about done this book on love and marriage. Even though I'm single, uh, there there's some delicious things in there that I need to know in case God sent that special one my way. But ladies and gentlemen, uh, B4LM was established in 2008 and their writing represents a renewed reality and respect to the word of God by utilizing the vernacular of ordinary folks such as yourself and those that are listening such as uh, people in our community you read in ease of tangibility because of the urban twists this particular style may be out of the norm for Christian work check this out but their books are strategically written to reach readers who are looking to establish a personal relationship first with God as well as the readers who want to re-establish their relationship with God proactively proactively and progressively they represent familiar passages of the scripture of god's timeless word in hopes that the readers like you who may purchase this book are encouraged enough to apply it to your life by faith and receive the promises of god i like that it is their prayer in hopes that their books will bring encouragement inspiration and a closer walk with god ladies and gentlemen again uh the whitney's my, my first question Question I want to ask you guys is is God inspired the both of you together collectively or did God inspire you Rev or Shannon to say look um, we, 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 we have something special here in our relationship L let's talk about this thing on love let's write some books on love because God has been dealing with you two and your relationship who want to talk about that first I'll, I'll go with that I'll, I'll start this off hey, okay. hey now <laughs> I want to say hello to all of your listeners, and certainly to you, sir. I just really appreciate you and your ministry, indeed. And, yeah, that thing about God, the, the inspiration with us for our marriage is just truly, you know, the Word of God. It's, it's so important. You know, we, we went through things and allowed our, our lives to be, you know, seen through a glass house in a sense, right? Mm -hmm. and, and once you are on that particular stage or in that particular spotlight, why not throw a plot twist in there mm -hmm. instead of, you know, allowing it to be like, oh my God, there was a negative situation or this happened or they know this or they, you know, people talk or, you know, you know, whatever the case may be, or they see you being so, like you said, you say, oh my God, I see the Holy Spirit in there and I see God in there just through their pictures. Well, let's put it out there and let's say foundationally why. And, and to put that, be able to uh, put that in writing and just, you know, share it 
with everyone because, you know, like you said, people ask us all the time, oh, you guys are so awesome, you know, I love you guys, this vibe, I love your energy, you know, how do you do it? And, you know, we, we always have to answer, it's God, you know, really and truly, but we loved each other, mm-hmm. you know, we really liked each other as friends, as people, you know, we didn't have um, conditions on each other when we met, mm-hmm. you know, we just went for it. It mm-hmm. was like taking a leap of faith, especially when um, the both of us had already experienced um, bad relationships, mm. breakups, and, so, you know, things of that nature that we go through as single people, sure, sure. And, you know, you understand. Sure. And so when we met, it was really important that, you know, the things that we have in our book, no baggage. Mm-hmm. So we laid everything on the line. Mm-hmm. Um, we utilized going to marriage counseling Mm. and really took it to heart whether we were in church or not i mean we understood that god had to lead our relationship and our marriage in order for us to be successful sure amen amen what about you rev yeah rev go ahead Mm -hmm. i believe that you know along the journey we realized to ourselves that you know life is almost like a book you know god writes the story from the end to the to the beginning and then but we live it from the beginning to the end so Mm -hmm. if life is like a book then you always have chapters and books so you have to keep on continuously growing keep on let the book of your life evolve so when you're with somebody and you're married to somebody then, then you have to continuously be able to evolve you have to continuously be able to to grow know what your spouse know the changes in your spouse let to recognize that you know you ain't the same person that you was when you met your spouse right you know because it's a it's a journey so you have to be willing and if you keep god first you'll be willing you'll be mm-hmm. willing to keep on trying because you realize that it's just a chapter this one chapter is not the totality of the book it is sure. not the totality of your life so when you keep on pushing like that it makes it easy to love the one you with Right, I like that because you're realizing that you're on a journey together. Yeah. yeah. Amen. Now, now, where where did you guys meet? Number one, yeah, just share that briefly, and then number two, tell the viewers and listeners how long you have been married so far. Okay, this is gonna get you because see, <laughs> we, we, we met in a club okay. in California. Wow. You know, I was I was actually dancing <laughs> on the dance floor, and I was hanging out with my twin brother. Right. And I told my twin brother, I said, hey, you see that girl over there? She looked pretty. Yeah. And I said, I want to dance with her. And so he went and told her. Right. And then she said, okay, well, tell your brother to come over here. So I went over there, <laughs> and we started dancing. And we've literally been together every day since. Wow, that is amazing. <laughs> there was a connection on the dance floor, huh, Rav? There was a connection on the dance floor. <laughs> I think that two-step got her. I think that two-step got her. I like that. So, so after that, how long ago after you did that dance? Because that was your first dance. And then you guys said, look, this is something special. We're going to get married. Um, I like, I like that for this women. <laughs> Go for the dance floor. <laughs> That, you know, that took a little time, you know, Uh um, David actually, um, courted me and, um, that was really, really, you know, different for me, right? Uh You know, you can meet a a guy and they'll go ahead and hold conversations with you and, you know, they'll lead you off and, you know, they're interested, but you very rarely get courted in the old fashioned sense. Right. So, um, we met each other and David knew you know, I told him about myself. We talked on the phone all the time. Wow. You know, we were one of those like teenage couples, you yeah. know, in the middle of the night, just breathing on the phone, falling asleep. And um, I would get up in the morning and David would have left a rose and a note on my windshield mm. that, <laughs> like you know, that. actually my father would see. He'd come in the house <laughs> and say, hey, you know, you know, there's something on your car. And I'm like, sure. what? What happened now, Daddy? And he just go see, you know, <laughs> and it was so funny. So he actually did it, you know, courted me in front of my family. Yeah. And um, my, my dad was really impressed with him, but he wanted to meet him. He was hardcore. He was sure. like, you know, I've watched you be hurt before. And so I'm not playing this game with nobody. So even though David was courting me sure. very well, <laughs> my father was had his eye on him and David was very consistent. It never stopped. Right. Our very first date actually was the playoffs. Um, so this time of year is very special for us. At the time, I um, was um, rooting for the Chicago Bulls, and of course, he was a Knicks fan. Okay. So um, you know that was our first date. Our first date after wow. the dance, 
after phone calls, after notes on my car, after, you know, just, you know, everything, you know, it was just really, really special. Yeah, And um, it just made a big difference. And the fact that we talked before we connected, you know, people right. always um, in mix up that uh, sexual fatuation, you know, that, right. that oh, <laughs> yeah, I, I'm, I'm so attracted to you exactly. because you look so good right. that you rarely hear what a person is saying. Right. And I think for us, we really heard each other before we looked at each other again. Does right. that make sense to you? Makes sense. Yeah. So how, how long have you been? Go ahead, Rev. Go ahead. And, and then also, you know, we had the opportunity to really spend a lot of time with each other, to sure. really get to know what makes the person feel happy, what makes the person tick, as they say. And, and, and that allowed us to understand each other. That allowed us to be able to to navigate through all the streams in which we had to navigate through sure. it. And see, the, you know, they always say that when you get drama in your life, it's either going to break you apart right. or it's going to pull you together. Right. So early dramas in our relationship caused us to pull closer together, which allowed us to be who we are today, you know, after 20-some years of marriage. Right. How many years have you guys been married so far? 20 years. Congratulations, man. That's awesome. And you, you, you just look so happy. I mean, I, I see many pictures of of people and couples and sometimes you could just look at a photograph and tell that they're they're not happy they just came together for that picture but there's something about the relationship that you guys have that glows and it shines and i, I really thank god for it i want i want to i want to talk about um this topic on love and we'll talk about marriage as well we're going to take a break shortly but um what have you found about love and your experience. Uh, I talk to many people, as you know, I work professionally in mental health as well. I, I counsel uh-huh. people and, you know, I don't consider myself a love therapist or anything. And God has given me the gift of discernment on some things, but I find that people have love really twisted. They, just like you just mentioned, they, they, they meet people. They, I don't believe in dating. I, I've, I've done that in my younger years. I'm closer to 50 now that I believe in courting. You You threw out a very key word because people need to go back yeah. to courting. But but people mix up infatuation with love. They, they think when they meet somebody and they're attractive, they're nice looking, um, they begin to have these feelings because all you're looking at is the physical appearance. Yeah. You don't really know the person. And then they a few days later, they say, I'm in love with this person, or I love this person. Yeah. Can you give me your thoughts on this, please. Okay. Yeah, that that's something that you really, you know, individually speaking, you know, it really is, um, I would have to say, so personal because you never know the core of, um, you know, a, an individual's, you know, inner being, what they've right. gone through, what they have experienced. So, you know, some people, like you said, they will mix up infatuation. You know, I, I, like I mentioned it, you know, it's that physicality, absolutely, 100%. But at the same time, some people um, only know the physicality, be, you know, in order to get to that love side. Right. It's just really flipped. It, it depends on how you're raised, you know, what, what, what did you want? What are your values? You know, some, some women grow up with this fairy tale, like, you know, this prince on the white horse is going to come save right. me. And when I see him <laughs> driving this particular vehicle or right. looking this particular way, oh my God, that's my prince. Well, you haven't really delved deeper than that. And I think the key thing is that is that people just don't really take the time to investigate or take the time to make time to work and and listen and understand people, you know, and it's really easy to do because you're so busy seeking that relationship. You don't really take the time for that. And you find out all these things after you're in it already. And sometimes it's hard to get out of. Sometimes it's an embarrassment to get out of. And then sometimes you just, you know, well, you know, until this blows up, this is my last thing or whatever, you know, the need to be with someone sure. oh, trumps common sense right. sometimes. Rev, what's your take on <laughs> that? Go ahead. And see, I'm, I'm more of a practical type person. Sure. I believe there's consequences behind every action. Absolutely. And so, and so when, you, when you mix up love and infatuation, mm-hmm. there's consequences behind that. You know, because the thing is, even when you drive down the freeway too fast, you can get a ticket. That's right. So when you move into situations too fast, you can just about get a ticket in life. You can get something that's going to stop you, something that's going to hold you back because you didn't take the time to follow the rules of engagement. And see, the the rules of engagement is 
it is that you have to know yourself first. That's because right. Because once you know yourself first, you know what standards in which you want to live in. Right. And if your standards are not up to par, then you need to get your standards up to par so that you will understand what you want in a person and what sure. you want in a soulmate. Yeah. Because lots yeah. of times that you realize, hey, you, it ain't about what a person look like, what a person <laughs> a, a, a person dr- dress like. Yeah, it's I all about. Like it. It's yeah. all about. It's all about how that person is going to react to adversity. Right. Can that yeah. person get back up after some trouble coming to your marriage sure. and your relationship? Is yeah. that person going to stick with you through thick and thin? Right. Is that yeah. person going to love you and respect you and, and and look out for you and take care of you, protect you? See, these are the things you have to look at. So it all starts with knowing yourself. Right. No, because if you don't know what you want, then you're going to fall for whatever comes along because you're going to think that that's what you want. Yeah. So well, I, I think it all awesome. starts with yourself. <laughs> Go ahead. And listen, listen, sir, you know, and we only talk about what we know, so that means we've been there and done that. Sure, man. absolutely. So definitely understanding that, that, that this relationship is, you know, we weren't going to let what we experienced in the past. I mean, you've got to learn something when you fall down right. and having learned from past experiences we both knew what we wanted by the time we met each other sure which sure. was key you know sure. timing i guess was everything right. you know godly ordained because it, i wasn't looking and that was another thing i literally wasn't looking <laughs> right, at night right, in the club right. i was sitting there minding my business yeah. <laughs> just you know letting whoever hey how are you exactly. yeah well great you know exactly. but this guy this guy, wow. when he came and got me and got me on the dance floor, you know, it was a connection sure. um, it, via eyes. It was just that soul connection. It just it, it was a feeling, and it was not a feeling I was used to. Sure. And so it really made me acquiesce, which is probably why we talk so much, right? right. right. It was like it was so good, it couldn't be. Right. You know, communication is so key in in the relationship. I tell people that you can't have a relationship uh, through just texting and you have to talk to your mate. I just believe it (laughs) all the time. Guys, we're going to take we're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, we're going to get right into this book on love and marriage. I'm going to tell people the contents of this. And I'm going to pick some things out of this book because we need to talk about this. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm talking to the Whitney's uh, love and and marriage, uh, their relationship Make it last forever. We're going to be right back with them right after this important message. Hang right there.